It is time for the main event of the FARC Smash Beer Low Dollar Series' opening weekend here at Daytona. The Smash Beer Get Smashed 200. 40 cars will be turned loose for 80 laps, and Stanley Parsons with the Wesley Family Racing Team will lead the field to the green. Parsons and Leslie Riggs earned their front row starting spots during time trials. The rest of the lineup was determined by the results of the Lobo Twin 100s. Richard Scott won the first race. He will start on the inside of row two. Kenny George, the winner of the second race, will start on the outside of row two. Kenny George will also be the highest starting of the 13 rookies we have in this race. Row number three, Liam O'Connor and Max Chevillan are the only other two rookies starting in the top 20. A couple of other names to look out for, uh, Jason Bates, starting on the outside of row four with a brand new team. Unfortunately, team owner James West failed to qualify for the race. And you saw Greg Gray starting on the inside of row five. Ken Groves Racing, always a threat at Daytona. Kenny Brillen, the winner of the 1996 Rockford 200, starts on the inside of row 11. The Arnold Pine car has been very fast this weekend. Patrick Carpino, the 1996 Series champion, is back to give it another go. He's brought a car number 200 to Daytona. He had a teammate, number 204, uh, Mason St. Martin, but St. Martin got caught up in a crash in his twin. Ashley Tucker with her new ride at MJ starts in, on the outside of row 12. On the outside of row 13 is rookie shootout winner Thomas Tucker. He was able to salvage a top 20 in his twin after getting spun, did not need the provisional. Billy Ray Smith Thompson taking over the number two that Andy Pearson made famous in the series, made his way in as well as new teammate Bradley Carlisle. And we've got a few guys that didn't have a whole lot of pace during the weekend, but still squeaked their way in like Kyler Spavidal, Troy Peterson, and Art Gordon. Good job by those teams. 40 drivers going head to head for 80 laps. Let's go trackside to see how it all unfolds. The Sar Eagle pace car leaves the field in the hands of Stanley Parsons. He'll, hopefully he'll get a much better start than he did in his twin yesterday. Green flag is in the air. Parsons leads across the line, but Leslie Riggs has a problem. Car number nine stalls out at the start. Look out, she's being passed on both sides. Fortunately, there wasn't a huge crash, but Leslie Riggs in trouble early on after a uh, very promising start to the weekend. Riggs will limp her way to the pits and lose several laps right at the start. In the meantime, Richard Scott has snuck around Parsons for the race lead. So Parsons getting sniped on the start once again. Scott trying to uh, show that he's the man to beat. We got a car heading towards the pit lane. At the end of lap number one, Richard Scott leads. It's Robert Lechleiter, car 11. That's the pit with a uh, cut tire. Unfortunately, Robert Lechleiter, a uh, younger brother of Dan Lechleiter, is gonna lose a lap. Greg Gray also having trouble in the opening laps. Lap number two, car 78 slows to a crawl off of turn number two. So coming to the end of lap two, does anyone else have a problem watching for more cars coming into the pits? No, looks like uh, we're all good for now. Lap four, we're gonna have trouble, Bradley Carlisle getting into the back of Rebel Denman. Denman up into the wall. Dan Lechleiter almost onto his roof. Kelly Spleisen, mass massive damage to the front end of that 96 car. That's gonna be the end of the race for Spleisen and Lechleiter. Dan Lechleiter, nowhere to go. Nowhere to go for Kelly Spleisen either. But unfortunately, Bradley Carlisle not showing too much spatial awareness or uh, patience early on. He's gonna take out Spleisen and Lechleiter. Coming back to the caution, Todd Stater has taken over the race lead. He leads over Danica Hollifield and Robert Lechleiter, car number 11, is going to get back onto the lead lap. So as one Lechleiter brother gets taken out, another gets back into the picture. Field slowing down, um, trying to catch up to the pace car. Uh, Todd Stater immediately enjoying leading laps again after leaving Green or Die Racing for the new David Hetzel team. A Trek Togger under this caution has a uh, problem. His car stalled on pit road and he's gonna lose a few laps. So we're not done with mechanical gremlins just yet. Anthony Griffith leads uh, the entire field pitted. Griffith got out first and Robert Lechleiter comes all the way around to uh, second place. I believe uh, car 11 took fuel only on his stop. Greg Gray in the 78 and Leslie Riggs in the 9 still have a lot of work to do. Both are multiple laps down. I believe Greg Gray is two laps down. Riggs is four laps down. But there's more trouble. Shavillan into the back of Smith Thompson. Kurt Walker, huge hit. And Smith Thompson 
Almost goes over. Mark Thompson. Nowhere to go in that orange 61 car. So we're only coming to lap 10. And already we've had two violent wrecks. I'm not sure what Max Chevillin is doing. He just drives straight through the back of uh, Billy Ray Smith Thompson. And Smith Thompson just bounces right into the path of Mark Thompson. Now, uh, Billy Ray Smith Thompson did win a Fark truck race a couple years ago after flipping his car over, but I don't think he's going to be able to come back from this one as we're on board with Troy Peterson, who initially misses uh, the two car, but then he just uh, clips Kurt Walker at the last moment right before getting through. Now, Kevin Monroe, <laughs> very, very close call for Monroe. And here's another close call. Bob Steffen smashes into the 98. That clears the path for the 63. I think Kevin Monroe is going to need a change of pants after this one. Now, because we just had a round of pit stops under that first caution, we don't have too many takers on pit road this time around, but Anthony Griffith is one of them as well as several cars from the back half of the field. Liam O'Connor and uh, Zach Webster in that 41. Having trouble coming to the restart, but they're going to have to pit again. O'Connor's going to come back out, but unfortunately, oh, Zach Webster's going to be out as Trek Togger gets spun after the restart. A little bit of help from Monica Rook sends the 74 around, but they're not going to fly the caution for this, and they're not going to fly the caution for this either as Stanley Parsons gets caught up in that traffic jam and gets put into the wall. Things are not going too well for Stanley Parsons. Uh, Max Chevillen got put into the wall as well but uh Parsons after uh getting sniped on the start now has to deal with this but Patrick Carpino in car 200 has found his way into the lead Greg Gray at the front of this pack trying to get one of his laps back racing with the leaders I don't really think they appreciate the presence of Greg Gray or Leslie Riggs who are both multiple laps down but nonetheless um, the pack has strung out. They're running a lot more single file now. After two big wrecks in the opening laps, I think we're ready to calm things down a bit. Now we're looking at Thomas Tucker, who has dropped a cylinder after that car was almost perfect during the rookie shootout and the twin 100s. Big, big disappointment for Tucker and Ashcroft Family Racing. They ran so well up until today, and now Tucker's about 20 miles an hour off the pace. In the meantime, back up front, we're starting to get a little bit racier, three wide between Robert Lucklater, Allie Riggs, and Patrick Carpino. As Monica Rook takes the lead, she's trying to find her way around the lapped car of Greg Gray. Here comes Lev Azarov, car number 82 for Russ Autosport. Azarov running in second place in this nine car lead group. And then it's a bit further back to 10th place, Anthony Griffith, Jack Ashcroft, Aaron Singer and Todd Stater follow as Billy Bob Childers blows up from 14th place. Engine problems continuing to plague Power Surge America. Remember his teammate Jim Kidd blew up in the Twins after he restarted in the lead. So big disappointment for Childers. Thomas Tucker now goes a lap down. He holds up Monica Rook and that allows Lev Azarov to sweep by for the lead. And this lead group is now in danger of getting separated thanks to Thomas Tucker. Now say what you will about Greg Gray and Leslie Riggs continuing to race, but they're at least fast. I know Thomas Tucker's got to be disappointed at this turn of events, but he can't really be taking it out on the rest of the field. He's got to get out of the way. Coming to the end of lap 31, Robert Lechleiter is going to be the first of the leaders to partake in routine pit stops. But in the meantime, we've got Anthony Griffith up in smoke so that's the second of the team thunder cars now out of the race and what is griffith doing but anyway that's uh, gonna take out team thunder's remaining car bob steffens was caught up in that second wreck lap 33 kenny brillen and zidane quackenbush pit with again the lapped car of greg gray end of lap 35 richard scott and ali riggs come into the pits richard scott continuing to impress with this last minute deal to run Daytona. Patrick Carpino is going to give up the lead to come into the pits. He'll have company in Danica Hollifield. That's going to put Lev Azarov in the lead. And I believe these will be the last of the leaders to come in. Lev Azarov and Liam O'Connor. That's Rebel Denman, the 101, still running after that wreck on lap number four, but he's off the lead lap. 
And after pit stop cycle out, the lead group is now down to four cars. Monica Rook, Allie Riggs, Richard Scott, and Patrick Carpino. Their pit crews have really been on top of things, and they remain in the fight for the race lead. Greg Gray, Max Chevillin, and Trek Togger are the lapped cars mixed in among the leaders. Lev Azarov comes out in fifth place, but it looks like Danica Hollifield, Robert Lucklater, and Zidane Quackenbush are going to be trying to catch him. Kenny Brillen and Liam O'Connor are a bit behind this group as well. Lev Azarov will be flying solo with Rus Autosport this year. Unfortunately, Radimir Stanichev no longer involved with the Fark side of the operation. Now we look back to 10th place, Aaron Singer, the highest running of the M&J cars. M&J Racing not really doing as well as they expected to. Aaron Singer will be driving this 62 car uh, here at Daytona and then at Talladega and Texas World at the end of the season. So super speedways only for Aaron Singer, which honestly seem to be the only tracks he's good at. And you see uh, Todd Stater in that 66 lurking behind, looking to catch the 62. Battle for 12th between Bradley Carlisle, who started shotgun on the field and helped trigger the first caution, and Jason Bates in the 09. 14th place, Jack Ashcroft coming around to lap his teammate, Thomas Tucker. So fortunately, the Ashcroft team still has a car that is running on all eight cylinders, and if they can catch a caution, uh, Jack Ashcroft will be catching back up. This field has gotten really strung out with the long green flag run and the pit stops and the varying speeds of all the pit crews. 15th place belongs to Farrell Burgundy, uh, the San Diego-based team. It's a very lonely 15th place for Burgundy. Unfortunately, the all the Lycoya-backed teams don't seem to be faring too well aside from Liam O'Connor. Now 16th and 17th, the last cars on the lead lap are Kyler Spavidal and Ashley Tucker. Spavidal slowing off of turn number four. Ashley Tucker is going to go by and take 16th, but now they're both going to be lapped by Monica Rook. Not sure what that was out of Spavidal. Seems to be struggling with the handling of that car, and maybe it started to get away from him. Coming to the end of lap number 55, Monica Rook is going to peel off into the pit lane, but there's going to be trouble. Carpino going for a long slide down the front stretch after contact from Richard Scott right as this pit cycle begins. Richard Scott just gets right into the back of Patrick Carpino, who picked up the lead after Monica Rook pitted. And after a long, long green flag run, the caution's going to fly on lap 57 right in the middle of the pit cycle. This is going to catch a few teams a lap down. Ally Riggs pitted right behind this incident, but she's going to come out in front, front of the leaders and not lose a lap. But some people just aren't going to be as fortunate. You're going to see in a moment that line of cars on the inside. Kenny Brillen and Robert Lechleiter were on the lead lap, but they pitted a lap before the incident, and they're going to fall off Robert Lechleiter. That's going to be the second time in this race he's fallen off the lead lap. But the first time he was saved by a caution, now he got screwed by a caution. Monica Rook, also not faring too well. She's restarted on the tail end of the lead lap. She's trying to stay in front of the leaders, and it looks like we're trying to go four wide. Kenny Brillen sticking his nose in there. He's going to get in the, into the back of Max Chevillen. Chevillen right up in front of Danica Hollifield, and we've got a pile up. Off of turn number four, Patrick Carpino. You saw him get a piece of that. Ashley Tucker and Aaron Singer, two of the M&J cars involved. But poor Patrick Carpino. Uh, he's running right up in the lead. And now he gets caught up in two wrecks in a row. Richard Scott continuing to lead. Oh, Kenny Brillen into the back. Richard Scott, Kenny Brillen going on a rampage, trying to get himself back onto the lead lap. The 20 team. Very desperate to get back into the picture. But I'm sure some people down here at the track wouldn't have minded seeing some karmic retribution going Richard Scott's way after he, he initially spun Carpino. Now approaching 10 laps to go. Contact between Leslie Riggs and Lev Azarov. Riggs getting spun up into the wall. Kyler Spavidal is collected. Patrick Carpino again. This race has really gone downhill in a hurry for poor Patrick Carpino. But unfortunately, as they say, cautions breed cautions. Once we had that initial spin, 
It all went to madness in a hurry. Now on board with Jack Ashcroft who worked his way back up into sixth. It looks like he may have come down on the 82 of Azarov that forced Azarov up into the nine. But Ashcroft is able to escape without too much damage. Now coming back to the caution, Kenny Brillen looks like he makes contact with Richard Scott. Fighting to get back onto the lead lap and he manages to do it. So Kenny Brillen's gonna come around and rejoin the tail end of the lead, lead group where I don't think he's gonna have too many friends. Kenny Brillen very desperate to just shove his way through trying to force himself back into this race. Richard Scott continues to lead on this restart. Seven laps to go. He leads over Todd Stater. Robert Lechleiter and Riley Durbin are a lap down, and they will be racing each other for position. Richard Scott going for the sweep at Daytona after winning his twin yesterday. And with two points victories this season, it will guarantee any driver entry into the Farkoff. Fark's new championship playoff system, but uh, if he manages to do it, only time will tell if he will attempt to go for the championship because as far as we know, he's only planned to run Daytona, but Todd Stater comes into rain on his parade, and now the lap cars are playing interference. Robert Lechleiter and Riley Durbin following each other past Stater, but Stater's gotten by them again. Monica Rook trying to get back into the picture. Rook and Stater dueling for the lead. Richard Scott coming back three wide with the lapped cars. Bradley Carlisle, car eight, entering the picture as well after falling a bit behind the lead group during that long green run. But now problems for Richard Scott. Something breaks on that 27 car. Richard Scott slows to a crawl and takes to the apron. Off of turn two, Richard Scott going for the sweep is now out of contention. And poor Bradley Carlisle. He worked his way up through the field, got into this lead group after starting in dead last. But now he slows down for the 27, doesn't run into the back of him. And that's going to cost him a shot at the win. Imagine what, what could have been coming from last to win. But it's not going to happen for Bradley Carlisle now. He's way behind. He fell way behind in a hurry. But now, coming to the white flag. One more lap to go. Todd Stater and Monica Rook dueling for this win. But they've got to contend with the lapped cars of Robert Lechleiter and Riley Durbin. Battling for, I believe that's going to be the ninth position. Stater and Rook trying to get themselves back into the spotlight. Stater struggled with Green or Die Racing last year. Monica Rook is making her comeback in Fark after sitting out 2015. But here comes Riley Durbin to the inside of Monica Rook. Rook is not going to be able to get to Stater's bumper as Riley Durbin tries to get away from Robert Lechleiter. Oh, the agony for Monica Rook. But Todd Stater is going to have a clear path back to victory lane in the Fark Smash Beer Low Dollar Series. And in their first weekend of Smash Beer Low Dollar Series competition, David Hetzel Racing will go to victory lane. Monica Rook has to settle for second place, but she picks up 15 bonus points, five for leading lap and 10 for leading the most laps. Allie Riggs coming home third with Bjorn Green Racing. Hopefully she'll be able to perform just as well. The next time she shows up with that team, Jack Ashcroft coming back to get a top five for Ashcroft Family Racing after Thomas Tucker's disappointment. Lev Azarov fifth, Bradley Carlisle sixth after falling behind thanks to Richard Scott, but he still picks up 10 bonus points for making up the most positions from the start of the race. He started in dead last. Jason Bates and Kenny Brillen round off the lead lap finishers. And you saw the duel between Riley Durbin and Robert Lechleiter for ninth place that unfortunately interfered with the battle for the win. Sedane Quackenbush 11th, Stanley Parsons salvages a 12th place finish, picking up 20 bonus points for starting on the pole, but unfortunately did not lead any laps. Farrell Burgundy 13th, Liam O'Connor 14th. O'Connor was in the lead group um, at the start of that long green run fell behind after the first round of pit stops and then fell a lap down when that caution came out during the second round of pit stops. 
Rebel Denman salvages a 15th place finish after getting caught up in that first wreck. Art Gordon, 16th. Laser Motorsports not showing too much speed, but they're able to pick up the pieces when other people trip over each other. The three M&J cars that finished, Ashley Tucker, Aaron Singer, and Monroe, 17th through 19th. And after breaking down from the race lead, Richard Scott got back onto the track a few laps down and picked up 20th place. Now let's look at the points heading to the Sayre Speedway in Alabama, heading from one of the biggest tracks to one of the smallest tracks. Todd Stater sits on top of the boards after his victory, Monica Rook just two points behind. Richard Scott third, but again, we don't know if he's going to be showing up again. Jason Bates fourth, Lev Azarov fifth, Stanley Parsons sixth. Durbin, O'Connor, Robert Lechleiter, and Allie Riggs, all of those guys um, are not going to be showing up too often. Neither are Kenny Brillen or Thomas Tucker. It's a long way down to Bradley Carlisle, the next of the drivers that we know are going to be going for the full season. Kenny George III fell out under the first caution. He finished 37th, but we know that George is going to be running the full season and with his victory, it should be easy for him to maintain Farkoff eligibility. And the same goes for Todd Stater. Danica Hollifield, Greg Gray, Ashley Tucker, and Max Chevillin round out the top 20. The next time the Fark Smash Beer Low Dollar Series will be in action will be at the Quarter Mile Sayer Speedway in Dora, Alabama for the Dude's Pizza 200. And as always, you'll be able to catch the action right here on the FARC Racing Network.